Wow, haven't seen you guys for a while. Sorry about that. Well, as you can see, I'm sitting here playing by myself. Just haven't had uh, any chance to play with Phil since he had his surgery. You know, he had to get his ACL repaired, so it's been kind of tough. So I'm learning how to play games on my own. But also, getting ready for Easter, which is also kind of fun. But um, not sure how we're going to get the Table for Two show off and running again. Hey, Jane, what you doing? Hey, I'm just playing Game of Solitaire. I'm getting kind of comfortable with this. Mm. Well, you know, my legs feel a little bit better, and I finished my therapy for the day. So yeah. maybe we could try Solitaire for Two. You want to play? Yeah. You feeling up to it? Yes, I am. All right, well, let's play Solitaire for Two then. All right. Table for Two, Table for Two. Playing games, just me and you. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Hippy happy, Easter's on its way. Did you have any wine before we opened this bottle? <laughs> it's a bunny rabbit. I, I love what? Easter. Uh huh. Chocolate and eggs. I said it like a Midwestern. <laughs> eggs. <laughs> and we even colored eggs, didn't we? Yes, we did. So, happy Easter, everybody. Mm -hmm. If you celebrate Easter. If you don't celebrate Easter, please ignore the bunny rabbit. Oh. All right, the bunny rabbit's going here. <laughs> I didn't think we are going to play with the stuffed but animals. We are but... drinking some wine today. Yes, we are. A little bit of a Chardonnay. Pic... I don't know how to say that. Piccini. No. Piccinini? Piccinini. From Mendocino County. I guess it's California. Mendocino. Napa. We need to go to Napa soon. Yes. I love Napa. Again. Anybody in California out there? We love Napa. Cheers. All right. Yummy. Okay. So I'm happy to say Phil was uh, ready to play a game today. So that actually worked out for us. And what we did play, as he mentioned, is Solitaire for Two. Now this game is by Gryphon or Griffin. 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 You say it that way? We don't know pronunciation sometimes. Griffin Games. Um, it actually plays one to four players. One, you know, a regular game of solitaire. You can actually use this game to play a regular game of solitaire if you want to play all, all by yourself like I was. Or you can play up to four, just having two teams of two. Uh, but we did the actual, uh, what it's called, solitaire for two way of playing. And uh, 13 or older, so mm -hmm. that's about it. But uh, yeah, solitaire for two. Yeah. So what do we, uh, let's do a little bit of the scoring, what we thought about this game. Phil, you want to start us off with some scoring? I'll start us off. All so, right. This game was easy to learn. Why, However, why was it easy to learn? It was easy to learn. However, don't be lured into thinking you know all the rules up front just because you know how to play solitaire. Yeah, don't think uh, that. You do need to go through the book and check out what the differences are. There are some key differences. In fact, like for instance, um, you know how in regular solitaire you find an ace, you can put it up on top and start that ace pile. Uh, not here. You have to have an ace and a two. That's just one example of something unique about the rules. So right. uh, easy to learn because of those little gotchas that you have to make sure you remember. Um, we gave it a four. Yeah, we gave it a four, which is yeah. It took me a few more times. I had to keep reminding myself the different things you know that are different. So that did take mm -hmm. time, but we got over it. Um, the manufacturing of the game is really cool. Um, you'll see in a moment when we play the game. Um, they're tiles, little plastic tiles. So. And they're very well made. Like they're, yeah, they're very. Uh, almost my game. <laughs> they they really are well made. Um, they're light. Um, it, you know, they're only it's just tiles. That's all it is. It's all the game has is tiles. But it's very well made. What I really like about the idea that the tiles, though, instead of cards, is they're not going to bend. They're not going to get ruined. This game will last pretty much forever. Um, so we gave it a, a five. I mean, there's nothing really wrong at all about this no. manufacturing. So no. five and I, a good I, job, Griffin Games. I was happy with it. Yeah, so. very good. Uh, fun. So, you know, regular solitaire, playing cards, kind of boring after a while, but, you know, that's just how it Even is. Even on the computer, you're like... Ch -ch -ch -ch. Even on the computer, after a while, you know, yeah, the old computer, all the cards go flying. Um, <laughs> so, but solitaire for two, it... You know, it, it adds kind of a point play against each other, so, you know, adds another component to the gameplay, which was good. You're so, actually talking to somebody instead of playing by <laughs> instead yourself. Instead of just playing solitaire on your own while I'm 
healing up in the other room. So, yeah. uh, so for fun, we gave it a three. Gave it a three. Now, the reason we didn't give it a four or five, truthfully, is because it's still a solitaire. Let's be honest. I mean, it's you know, you only you just keep playing and it plays as it is, but it's nothing yeah. exciting that goes on. Exactly. <laughs> Now, as for timing, we gave it a five because timing was fantastic. Less than 45 minutes to play a full game. Um, didn't even notice the time go by, really, though, because it was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, but I, I will say this is a game that we would play, you know, again, because of the timing, for mm -hmm. sure. So we really gave it a five. Five yeah. for timing, 45 minutes or less. Perfect for yeah. us. So would we play, and there go the cats, <laughs> would we play again? Uh, yeah, we would play this game again. Now, it's not necessarily going to be the first game we reach for. Definitely not the first um, game we reach for. There's but, so many uh, we have, of course. It's not, you know, that's, if I should always mention, we have like 600 games. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's, go ahead. But, uh, <laughs> but, but still, you know, but if, if, if we only have, you know, a half hour to play and we want to play a game that now that we know the rules Selfie. are pretty quick. She's with the buddy. Selfies, oh no. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we would play this game again. Uh, yeah. We gave it a four. Now wait, there's another reason I said I like this game, like, and I would play it again. What was that? We do travel a bit, as you remember on our cruise, um, or Puerto Rico last year. Sometimes when we travel, we bring games with us. And I love a game, you know, especially a game that just has tiles, because you can literally put this in a bag, and, and, you know, a small little bag, and take the game with you. So it's yeah. not like you have to bring a whole box or a board. Or, mm -hmm. So that's, again, why we gave it a four. I just want to make sure I point it out. It's portable. Yeah. Portable game, which is kind yes, of nice. So total score for Solitaire for two, we actually gave it a 21. 21 is pretty good out of 25 points. So yeah. uh, again, good job, Griffin Games. Now, if you'd like to see how to play Solitaire for two, stick around, and we're going to show you a couple of rounds of how to play. So I'm going to start by pointing out the major differences with this game, Solitaire for two, versus the Solitaire card game. Like there's two players? Okay, that's a really, really major difference. Uh, another so called two a tear. Another major difference. See the Table green? for two a tear. <laughs> See the green? We have green suits, anchors and wheels. Like money green. Kind of like money. Not actual money, unfortunately. Um, there are some jokers. There's a green, black, and a red joker. And, of course, we have tiles instead of cards. Mm-hmm. And you'll also notice that instead of a single draw pile of cards, uh, there is a, a set of stock. nicely arranged tiles, stock, stock, stock tiles. which Jane has arranged. Yes. Um, and I'll be pulling from this side, and Jane will be pulling from the opposite side. Yep. Um, those are the major differences. I think for some of the smaller differences, it makes sense for us to just play the game, um, and we can point that out as we go. So we'll play a couple of rounds, just we'll play an entire game. Yeah. So who went first in the last game? I went first because... <laughs> You felt bad for me. I did. Because you were all laid up in bed and I I'm by myself. And, and you did shout that you wanted to go first. I, mean, I had bite. <laughs> you had the rabbit. <laughs> oh, wait. Rabbit got hurt. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, so let's see how it's played. No animals were harmed in the filming of this. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I had to do it. Let's, let's Somebody's see. feeling much better. <laughs> let's get started. Where's your perk in? Oh. Oh, Percocet. Uh, <laughs> Percocet. I got wine. I don't need that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's take a look at the board. So if I go first, um, so for you who do know solitaire, sorry about this, but I'm just going to remind everybody. What you're doing here on, on the bottom is you're trying to go from highest to lowest, and they have to be different suits or different colors, okay, on the bottom. Eventually, what you're trying to do, though, is get to the top from lowest to highest, so ace to king. Um, but you have to start at the bottom uh, to start the game. And you're trying to get the three jokers up here, too. And the three jokers. And this, this actually shows you the layout of what you're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would look at the board and say, okay, what can I actually move around here? So first thing is I've got a queen here that can go under the king because there are two different suits, two different colors, and she's obviously lower than the king. Mm -hmm. But when I did that, it created an open space. So when that open space happens, you go to the tableau. That's what they call this up here at the top. And you pick the top one, and you go ahead and put it down. Here's a six. This is the funny part of a six. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah is really... this is really funny. Um, stupid, oh me. Uh, when I was playing the actual game together we tried the first time, I, I went like that. and said, oh, nine. <laughs> and I just thought it was a nine, and I just kept going about the game and didn't even think twice. It looks just uh, like that. Time. It looks just like, except that if you're smart, <laughs> and I kind of wish the rules, maybe the rules do say this. I don't think they do, because I, I think most so. people are smart. Um, make sure the 
suit is to the right of the number when you have a situation like that. So that is truly yeah. a six. But I totally screwed that up and we had to exchange it later. It was just embarrassing. Oh, there was only us playing, so who cares? Mm -hmm. All right, so here's an eight, and I could definitely put that under this nine. By the way, doing this upside down is not that much fun. <laughs> it's um, a little tricky. Taking the top again and bringing it down. So now I have a queen there. Oh, she can go under the king. Wow. Look at you. Look at me. And then again, I pull from the top. Oh, another wow. king. Wow. All right, enough with the wax. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta find a better player to play with this. We game. didn't actually stack the deck either. They, no, these it's are just all whatever random. it is is coming up. Okay, so again, so I look again. I'm just making sure that you keep playing until there's no more possible moves that you can do. So I'm just gonna double check what I have here upside down again, uh, and just make sure there's absolutely, and I don't think there is. No, there's nothing else I could possibly do now to put you know lower to higher, or, you know, in, in any of the rows. Um, when I think I'm really done with the turn, I then knock. Yes, you do have to do this. You knock on the table, and that kind of finalizes your turn. Why that knock is important, though, is when the next player goes to play his or, his, his or her turn, they can first look and see if you forgot anything. And they can potentially make moves that you didn't finish making um, before taking from the stockpile. Right. And by the way, the very first player doesn't take from the stockpile at all. They just start board. Which is what you did. Yeah. So, so then your turn. I look it over. I don't see anything that could be done. Are you sure? I am absolutely positive. All right. So with that being said, Philip, and, and again, he takes from this side, I take from this side. Mm -hmm. So Philip gets the first stop of three right. to try to now play into this loveliness. But what's really neat is if he actually gets all three of them on, in the mix here, that's called a trio, and he actually gets 25 additional points, Put those which so is you can nice. See those. Yeah. So what do you got there, Philip? So I've got a four of anchors, a jack of clubs, and a three of wheels. Okay. So let's see. The three can go here. Yep. That works. And the jack is black. He can go there. Jack Black. Jack Black, yes. <laughs> I like Jack Black. And uh, and this guy is going nowhere. So I'm going to form what's called the discard pile. Mm -hmm. And for sake of getting into the camera's view, I'm going to start it over here. So that, that's he discards that so he doesn't get the 25 points, that's for sure. No, I don't. No. And the discard pile, the, the, the head of the discard pile is called the talent. Um, that has a significance. Uh, it, just keep in mind, it's called the Talon, and you'll see that in the rules, too. Yep. And now, if you're done with your turn, what do you do? Are you done with your turn first? Did you make sure you have everything done? Make sure. And then I'm done. Okay, so yes. now, again, it's my turn. Now, again, I first check to make sure there's nothing else he did, that, or he didn't do, that I could do. I can also use from his discards. If for any reason I also find something maybe he didn't do. Right. My, my recent discards stay face up so that you can actually use them. Right. Until I, and when I don't use them, they go down afterwards. But right, right now there's only one, so that has to stay on there. Right. Um, and there's nowhere I can put it, so pretty much I grab the next stockpile. Mm -hmm. So I get the next stockpile here, and I get an, ace, an eight, an eight of wheels, a six of anchors, and a five of clubs. So immediately I can put the five of clubs under the six. I have that going for me. I have really nowhere to put the six here because I have no sevens out there. And on the eight, I'm looking up upside down again here. <laughs> I know, so the sixes I keep looking are at the nines and they go, they're sixes, darn it. Um, yeah, I really have nowhere I can put this eight either. I'm just going to double check my thought on that. Yeah, I'm pretty much screwed. <laughs> Nothing else I really can do here. Just double checking. Okay. So, unfortunately, I can't use either two tiles. Right. So I put them in the discard now next to the tableau. Now they stay up again because Phil could potentially use right. them. When he goes to his next turn, we turn them over. Um, now the four was mine, so that one is buried. Yeah, and now the six becomes the talon or right. talon, or whatever it's called. All right, so now what do you think? I am positive I can't use that eight or that, uh, what was that, a six? That's a six. <laughs> um, so I don't see any moves here, so I'm going to take the next three. Take the next three. I've got a two. Ooh, I've got a joker. black joker. And ha, almost got uh, almost got tricked there. I thought that was a six. It's a nine. Um, it's a nine. There are no tens out there. There are threes. There you go. So let's see. I could go here. Mm -hmm. and, and then the joker, I can play anywhere there's a black that... Uh, that needs that, to fit in. That needs to fit. However, you can also put it at the top and get 10 points. I could go straight to the top. So that's a questionable thing. It's like, do I want to use it as a joker and stick it in the mix, or do I want to put it right at the top and get 10 points for that? Yeah. That's um, you know, your decision. I'm if you put it straight, up, uh, straight on top, I think, yeah, you get the 10 points. Mm -hmm. If you switch it, you get 
40? 40. I think it was 40. Now, when Phil says switch it, if you actually use it as a, like if you put it down here as an ace, black ace, later when the black ace comes out, he can take it and switch them, and he gets another additional 40 points. Right. As well as the 10, putting it up here. So it's usually better at the end of the game to go right to the top but toward the beginning of the game, it might make more sense to put it out here, which is what I'm gonna do. So, um, in fact, I kinda like that idea. Thanks. I'm gonna use the black ace. Don't really help your, you know, <laughs> The black part. ace right there. Uh, and then as far as this uh, nine Six. to, nine. I don't want that. It's a nine. All right, so because he doesn't want I it. I knocked. Yes, you didn't want it, so we're gonna put it in the pile here. You didn't use these two. Right. Now the nine's out there for grabs. Mm -hmm. So again, I take my turn, and let's just see what we have here real quick. Just make sure you didn't forget anything, which I don't think you did. I think you did a good job. So, and the nine, or the six, or the nine. <laughs> I can't use that anywhere. So I'll take the next, we'll just do another round here. So I'll do the next three. I have a three of hearts. I've got a 10 of anchors. Oh, I've got a king, which I can't put anywhere. Um, you have to have a blank space uh, to put the king. Um, but I do have a 10, which can go here which actually lets me use this nine and, oops, and move it over here, do, do, do. which then I turn over this one, which is a queen. All right, so first I'm getting there. There are many sevens, we need a seven. We don't have a seven, however, and we don't have four I can use. Oh, not looking good, not looking good. So literally I go ahead and put these two and I say I can't use them over that okay go back to the discard pile um, and that's it so you just you literally are doing that turn by turn by turn now one thing we didn't actually it didn't come up I wish it did I should pick one more pile let's see if we can get an ace to okay. come up let's see if we can get an ace or maybe we can get uh, more of a run that we can move around on the board here oh we did get an ace okay so let's just talk about an ace as a whole mm -hmm. you know normally in a game of solitaire depending on rules you normally take an ace and you put it right at the top and say, okay, I'm starting now the ace mm -hmm. and then the lowest to highest. This game has a special rule that you cannot start an ace up here. You have to have at least the ace and the second number, the two, right. in order to start it up here. So you can't do that, but that's just an important difference again of, of this game. Which was good because when we played our first time, we had several aces out there, but they were all like stuck behind the twos and it was uh, it was kind of tricky to finally get those pleasant. dislodged no, and start to pleasant. work. Um, so let's see. Let's play uh, this one out. We'll I'll just uh, play this one out. Well, yeah. Wow, I've got no. This is really sad. I have no okay. place to put that ace. So that's going to end up discarded. Yep. I have. No, oh, I do have a place to put the five. Yep. Um, and I do have a place to put the jack. So um, I don't have anywhere to move the four. So I guess this guy is going to get discarded. Ooh, I still have a shot at those. Yeah, but there's no way to shot. There's no way to use them, so. Okay, so that's, that's just an example of how to play. So now, just a couple things to note. How do you get points? Um, so number one, when you finally get your, your ace through king up here at the top, every time you play a tile at the top, you get 10 points mm -hmm. per tile that you end. Per tile. So on your turn, whatever you move to the top, you score that up. If you use your trio, you get all three tiles mm -hmm. in the mix. You get there, an additional 25 points. There's another way you can get points, and it's by moving a run of cards. Now, um, a run has to be the whole the column. The whole column. So let's, for the sake of argument, we'll get rid of that king and say that these cards are here. I've got a king over here. Mm -hmm. So if I move all five of these... Which you can do. ...and move these over here, uh, according to the rules, a run of five gets 50 points just for doing that move. Right. This is kind of tricky though. You can have a run of five, a run of seven, nine. a run of nine, or a run of 11. But six, eight, 10, and 12, you get nothing. You do nothing. You get nothing, so you can move them, but you're not gonna get any It's kind of interesting because it seems like when you're doing the move, it keeps coming out to an even number, like darn it, darn it, darn it, I can't As seem to As a matter of fact, the, another example of that is you can move less than five, let's be honest. So if I wanted to take this 10, nine, eight, Mm -hmm. and move it under this jack, I could do that too, but for three I get nothing. Right. But for some reason, strategically, I needed that jack somewhere else, 
that's maybe why I would do that. You know, there's just sure you want to unbury a, a, unbury a card because you've got an ace mm -hmm. uh, and above going. So you get points for making a run. Mm -hmm. You get points for moving them up here. You get points for using your trio. But the other thing you get points for is if you're the person who completes what's called um, what do they, they call it? Grand sequence. Grand sequence. So that's when you have a, a grand king. Grand sequence. Grand sequence. King through ace on the board, literally down the column. If, you, if you're the one who completes it all the way down, you get a hundred and. 125 points. points, which is really, that's a big point value. So so the thing is, every term you're adding up these points as you get, sometimes you get no points. Like this whole bunch of terms we just did, we, yeah. we got no points. But the game ends, how does the game end, Phil? Yeah, well, first of all, a game's fun because it's cooperative, but it's competitive all at the same time. Right. Um, so the game ends when, well, of course, if you get all the tiles up top, Ace through king, all six suits. Which we did plus not all get jokers. all the tiles at the top. We did not. We we did pretty good. I think we got in the sixes or sevens, but that's as far mm -hmm. as we could get. Um, or what was the other way that the game ends? The, the stockpile ends. Now, by the way, if this stockpile is over, you actually take anything left up here and any discards, and you're allowed to create a new stockpile, but only once. Mm -hmm. so there's only two possible rounds, really. So the first round, you use the stockpile. Once they're all in discards, you take whatever's left up here, end them, and you make one a new stockpile. Right. But then after that's done, and even if you haven't got everything up there, the game then ends and you add a point. Right. And we did cycle through one more time. We actually we cycled still... through twice, and we didn't get all the way at the top. We got pretty close, like you said. So how did that game end when we played it? Yeah, well, here's the deal. Scores. We, as we were scoring along, we were you know, just putting out, like, Jane got 50 points, 10 got, Phil got 10 points. And at the end, we were like, okay, let's total it up. I got 360 points. Mm -hmm. How many points did you get? I got 360 points. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different numbers. They added up to 360. That was pretty And yes, funny. you can tie. As a matter of fact, in the book, it's kind of funny, there's a little story that there was a lady uh, in the Philippines who actually had one more turn left in the game on the second round, and she was losing 635 to 325. She actually wound up playing all the tiles up to the top on that second on that last turn, but it, the, at the end, 635 to 635. Could you imagine? She was all excited. She was going to win the whole game. She thought, and they added the points up. And even in some cultures, that's a good good ending to end in a tie. Everybody's happy. I wasn't happy <laughs> because I really wanted to win. It's like that was a big waste of time. <laughs> yeah, well, that's but it, true. But it, but it was fun. But it was so. fun. It was a fun waste of time. No, but uh, you can end at a tie, and that's that's kind of interesting too. So you know, be aware of that. Mm -hmm. So we nobody gets points on this in this show today. Nobody gets any points nope. to add to the scoreboard. So uh, we'll just call that you know even Stevens. So anyway, if you want to purchase a copy of Solitaire for Two, you can go to the Griff Griffin. I want to say it right. Yep, Griffin website, which we will go ahead and put on the. Uh, We'll put website and whatever. <laughs> um, but also we're asking some help from our viewers. I know you hear this every time. Uh, to like our Facebook page, tweet us on Twitter, all those good things. But we're also asking if you could share the page if you do like it. We're yeah. trying to get more word out. Right now we have about 1,700, close to 1,700 uh, likes on Facebook. And I, we appreciate every single one of you who are watching our show, even though YouTube doesn't really reflect that for some reason. We're trying to figure that out. I think some of the mobile viewing and stuff, it kind of falls through the cracks. They don't count or something. But, but, uh, so watch it on YouTube as much as possible. <laughs> That'll help us actually get the, uh, the points there. But at the end of the day, we want to really maintain the show. We'd like to keep doing the show, but mm -hmm. we need more people to watch. To and and if you like it, then if you share it, that gives a lot greater chance that we'll get more likes and... More people watching. Obviously. It's so the you, big circle. Yeah. So if you, want to, if you want to help us out a little bit, we would appreciate that. And the, the bunny would be happy if you did that too. <laughs> I had to bring the bunny back I like in. the bunny. And also, if you haven't checked out our Facebook page, I'm sorry, the bunny ears are cute. Um, there's also, we're doing a contest right now. So we have a post on Facebook right now that if you share that post um, amongst your friends and family or whoever you want to share it with, we're entering those people who share the post in a contest. And on May 17th, I want to say it is, yeah, May 17th, mm -hmm. about a month from now right. or so, we are going to um, put all those names in a hat. Uh, and we'll, we'll even maybe we'll just videotape that live and pick out three yeah. names. First, we we'll pull the rabbit out of the hat, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Put on your head. Um, Too much wine. And those three people will each win one game um, of choice. We're actually going to give away games that we've been reviewing in GTM Magazine. 
Uh, so if you've been reading, hopefully you're reading GTM magazine. It's a great magazine if you're not. Nice magazine. But uh, we reviewed like Risk, we reviewed uh, Rampage, we reviewed mm -hmm. a whole bunch of good games. So we're going to go ahead and give three of those away to those of you who share. Sharing is good. Did your mama not teach you? Sharing is good. <laughs> Sharing is good. So until next time, see ya. <laughs> Have a good day. Table for Two show created by...